Bitcoin isn't following the same script anymore, and most people haven't realised it yet. So if you're still expecting the classic four-year cycle to deliver a 2025 peak, you're probably on the wrong side of history. So in this video, I'm going to show you the data that proves this cycle has shifted, reveal the most likely dates and prices for the next Bitcoin top, and why the real blow-off phase may still be far ahead of where everybody thinks. So let's get into it. Today we're going to dive into why I believe the famous four-year Bitcoin cycle is probably over and why the next major peak will most likely happen in early to mid-2026. Now, before we dive in, when I ran a survey with my followers on Twitter or X, 62% of you said that they think that the four-year cycle is dead. And from what I've seen in the other major polls as well, that seems to be the general consensus. But here's the thing, markets have a funny way of punishing the consensus. Time and time again, when the majority thinks one way, the market often moves in the opposite direction. So it's definitely a subtle reminder that we should always consider both sides of the story before cementing our assumptions. Now, Bitcoin, in some shape or another, has roughly followed a four-year time horizon pattern. And there are many debates about where exactly this four-year cycle begins and ends. Some analysts measure it from the cycle tops, others from the cycle bottoms, some focus on the famous halving events, and others believe it as completely tied to macro or global liquidity trends. And I'm not here today to suggest that any of these methods are wrong, and I'm not going to be suggesting that one method is inherently more correct than the other. But what's really interesting is that there's no universal agreement on it at all. Different people interpret the Bitcoin cycle in many different ways, and that's okay. And for today, the way I'm going to measure it is a combination approach, which I believe truly defines the Bitcoin cycle. And my framework is simple and consistent. It measures from the bear market low to the bull market top, and considers that a full cycle. And I think this method provides a more accurate view of how Bitcoin actually moves over time. And when we analyse it in this way, it reveals some pretty interesting patterns. So, looking back at Bitcoin's first cycle with reliable price data, from the bear market low to the bull market peak, it lasted roughly 749 days, which is just over two years. And during that period, the price experienced an astonishing 60,000% increase. Now moving on to cycle two, the time from the bear market bottom to the bull market top increased slightly to 847 days, or around two and a half years now. And the price gain diminished to a measly 12,000%. Now cycle three stretched even further again, taking 1,064 days, which is almost three years now, from the bear market bottom to the bull market top. And the returns continued to experience a decline, hitting about 2,000% this time. And what you've probably noticed here is the sheer consistency in the cycle lengthening. Each cycle from bottom to peak has grown by roughly six months compared to the previous one. The first cycle lasted two years, the second two and a half, and the third was three years. And this striking pattern suggests a kind of predictability in Bitcoin cycle timing that I had no idea about until now. I can guarantee that it's been overlooked by most. But more importantly, what it can do now is give us a framework for thinking about how this current cycle plays out. How long has this current fourth cycle lasted so far? Well, from the previous bear market bottom to today, it has been around 1,071 days which again puts us right around the three-year mark. But by observing past cycles, logic here suggests that there's roughly another six months to go before we might see a potential bull market peak. And I believe there are two sensible ways to model this. The first is a simple linear regression using the lengths of the previous three cycles, which are 749, 847 and 1064 days. And this simple model assumes that Bitcoin cycles continue to extend at a steady predictable rate, just like they have since inception, without any acceleration. So if we followed this linear logic, cycle 4 would have a duration of about 1202 days, or three and a half years. So using that, and counting forward from the last bear market bottom, we arrive at a potential bull market top date of the 9th of March 2026. And this approach is conservative and safe, it assumes that the past trend will continue consistently, and it's really a solid baseline to work from. Now, the second approach is a bit more sophisticated, 
which is a quadratic model that fits all the previous cycles exactly and then incorporates the accelerating nature of Bitcoin cycle extensions. And under this method, cycle 4 is predicted to extend to roughly 1,400 days, which is between 3.5 to 4 years. And this model here reflects a scenario where each cycle not only lengthens, but does so at an accelerating rate. So in practical terms, this model points to a potential bull market top of around the 21st of September 2026. Now, regular viewers of this channel know that I'm not a fan of pinning exact dates on Bitcoin's price movements, because markets are never perfectly predictable. But these frameworks give us a structure to work with. And from my previous analysis, it's clear that Bitcoin has not experienced a classical cycle top yet. None of the usual on-chain indicators or metrics are flashing any signs of a peak right now. And a true breakout, the kind that leads Bitcoin into a cycle top, requires some sustained momentum over many months. And I simply don't believe we have enough days left in 2025 to justify that happening by the end of this year. And that's why I believe many people will be caught off guard. The market often defies expectations at moments like this. Q4 of this year is the logical time for Bitcoin to top, based on most people's four-year cycle theory. But based on this analysis here, my base case scenario suggests a potential peak would actually more likely occur around the second quarter of 2026. So with these potential date ranges in mind, we can now start modelling realistic price targets for those windows. Using my logarithmic growth bands indicator, which is specifically designed to map Bitcoin's long-term logarithmic growth trajectory, accounting for gradual decay or diminishing returns over time, we can get a clearer sense of fair value and identify price action that might be overstretched or under pressure. And right now, the levels on this indicator place a fair value at around $97,000, with the upper boundary near $223,000 and the lower boundary around $46,000. And these levels essentially frame Bitcoin's long-term gravitational pull as such, showing where price tends to revert to or accelerate from. And when we extrapolate this forward to the linear regression target in March 2026, the logarithmic fair value line rises to roughly $106,000, with the upper and lower bounds expanding to $243,000 and $52,000. And if this bull market continues in a classic fashion, meaning we get a proper euphoric phase like in all previous cycles, I'd expect Bitcoin to realistically trade somewhere between $174,000 and $243,000 within that time frame. And the key point here is, this linear regression model is actually the conservative path here. It assumes that Bitcoin continues operating on the same long-term glide path it has followed for over a decade now, without any major acceleration or structural change in its market behaviour. And in that sense, these price ranges aren't actually wild predictions. They're simply what the model suggests when Bitcoin behaves normally. And historically, Bitcoin almost always overshoots its fair value line late in a cycle. So if anything, these upper bound estimates could end up being modest if we do end up in a proper sentiment-driven mania phase, where retail re-enters en masse, the ETFs continue absorbing the supply, and this long-term holder sell pressure eases off. But when we look at the quadratic expansion scenario, where the cycle extends to around 1400 days, the fair value climbs even further to around $126,000. And under a late-stage blow-off top scenario, that could place Bitcoin's peak between $199,000 and $272,000. And this scenario really highlights the psychology behind extended cycles. The longer Bitcoin chops sideways or slowly grinds upwards, the more investor conviction builds at those price levels. People become increasingly comfortable with higher prices, leverage starts to creep up, and the sideline capital gradually loses patience. And that cocktail is exactly what tends to fuel the final explosive move, or the blow-off top. And in an extended cycle, this effect becomes even stronger because the market has even more time to harden its expectations and absorb higher prices. But it doesn't guarantee a parabolic end, but it might increase the probability of one, in my opinion. And that's why these higher price targets aren't really unrealistic. They simply reflect what happens when fundamentals, psychology and the long-term trend structure all align at the same moment late in the cycle. And yes, they do rely on that familiar late cycle euphoria kicking in. But history shows that Bitcoin is more than capable 
are delivering dramatic upside during the final stretch of a maturing bull market. So to wrap things up, what we're really seeing here is the breakdown of the traditional four-year Bitcoin cycle. The timing structure that everyone has relied on for years just doesn't fit the data, and everything we've looked at suggests this cycle is stretching out further than most people expect. That's why, in my opinion, early to mid-2026 is shaping up to be a far more realistic window for a true cycle peak than anything in 2025. And when we overlay both the linear and quadratic models, it becomes even clearer. The linear model points towards a classic euphoric top in the $174,000 to $243,000 region, while more aggressive quadratic expansion models, where the cycle stretches out to around 1,400 days, opens the door to a more potential $199,000 to $272,000 peak. And these aren't random numbers, they're grounded in long-term behaviour, diminishing returns, and the structural supply dynamics we know are shaping Bitcoin today. But the big underlying theme beyond all these price targets for me is how extended cycles can change market psychology. The longer Bitcoin chops around and gradually grinds higher, the more comfortable investors become with elevated prices. Do you remember that Bitcoin was trading at $67,000 this time last year? It seems like an eternity ago that Bitcoin was back down at those levels, but it really wasn't. Expectations rise with price and patience fades, and eventually you get a type of sentiment environment where a late-stage blow-off top becomes more and more likely. And that's why these higher-end targets aren't as crazy as they might sound right now. They reflect what can happen when fundamentals, psychology, and long-term structure all start piling in the same direction. So that's where I think things stand. We're likely in a longer cycle, and the data points to higher valuations than many people expect. So if you found this breakdown valuable, make sure you subscribe for more deep dive analysis like this and drop a comment with your own cycle prediction. I always read them. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live. Built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.